Do you remember what the most amount of money you spent at Burbank Cards is in one day? About 780 grand. I'm addicted to cards. I think that I might be the biggest card dork in the industry. Holy. Oh, it's got his auto. I'm here for my stand so I could do my IG live and drink Coors Light. <laughs> <laughs> Look, saint versus sinners, the poor versus riches, top ramen place versus five star dentists. Wonder where I fit in, the humblest beginnings. Had to take some losses before I saw my first winnings. Silver line grinning, poverty line thinning. My life is like a moving in the plot, just thickened. Came from broken homes, trying to break the old traditions. Left my old ways for my future acquisitions, I know. Alright, everybody, I'm in the Card Father's dungeon lair. <laughs> Look at this guy. Hey, what? what's going on, guys? How we doing? Dude, I'm playing with some fire right now. All right. I you want to see, see some it. fire? I want to see some fire. All right. I don't even know what that shit is. All right. Let's see what we got. We got an Otani rookie mm. to 25. Oh, 2020. Look at that. Wow. It's beautiful. Please. Actually, a tag card out in the wild. How cool does this look in this holder? Wow. Doesn't that look cool? You don't see a lot of tag out in the wild. Oh, sick. The card looks incredible. Isn't that something? Yeah. Oh, another Otani auto. Oh. Another Otani auto. But you don't see all that much. 2016. Yeah, photo shoot. Nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Sean little Taylor. Little rest in the peace. late great. That card will go quick. What else we got here? It's a big card. How about an Allen Iverson? This is just the stuff I've worked the last few minutes. Got that guy. Yeah, that's a big card. Got the Purdy. Dang, Mookie Betts. That's a big one. That's a big one, right? That is huge. This is just the stuff right now. Oh, dude, not done. That's a nice autograph, too. Look at that. Wow, let me zoom in. I would say almost $20,000 in Otani cards here, right? Yeah, probably. And, he, yeah. The, and people are trading and selling for him quick. Look at these. There's more. 1850. Wow. Oh, look at that. This. Oh, this is a beauty. I'm partial to the Jambalaya, Kobe. Ooh, kidding me? Yeah, that's what's on my desk this second. So with this kind of stuff, you're processing it right now. Ryan just bought it, and we got it priced. It's going to go into the uh, sneak preview showcase tomorrow, and then tomorrow night it'll go on IG Live and then get launched to our websites that night. So this stuff will be live online uh, tomorrow. Get things up quick. Can't let it sit. How we doing? You gotta get the big boss. Right, Let's see what we got up here. My uncle left me an inheritance. Um, none of them are PSA certified, I don't think. Right, probably not from what I'm seeing up top. Let's this isn't this is all the stuff. You got Wally Joiner. Um, at the end of the, the bottom line with us is we own more of this than anyone else. Let's take a look through the whole thing. This was big baseball back 1990. 94 Pinnacle Terry. We have a 40 million card warehouse yes. um, next door that we have a lot of this stuff. Right. That's very common. Let me just see if there's anything of value. In here so this is a funny thing. Yeah. You know how many shops I see a box like this comes in. There could be some hidden gems, right? Right. But so, sometimes it's 90 stuff. So let's just say it was like all 99 cent stuff. What would you say to the person? You know, would you help? Like obviously you want to help them, right? You want to help them, a but you also don't want to waste their time. Um, there's a few vintage cards here. These are cards that we sell for a dollar and a half, two dollars. Not really a big deal. Um, I always recommend a smaller shop that might not have all of this inventory. Yeah, I actually went to a smaller shop in uh, Monrovia. Monrovia, okay. Yeah, they actually referred me to you. Okay. There you go. Um, well, the 50s and 60s we always buy, but this is like 1989 stuff. Did you ever collect cards? Uh, me personally, no. Okay. Uh, me and my uncle were polar opposites, but uh, he pretty much said that if uh, I had a dream I wanted to fulfill or something, that you know, feel free to sell this stuff. Yeah. Okay. There you go. It looks like there's a Ooh, look at that Griffey on the top. That's cool. Got a Griffey Auto. Oh, that right. would have to be certified. We have to get certified though. Yeah. And the card's got a crease. Did your yeah. uncle get any of these signed or you don't know? Um, he's a freak. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, if that Griffey was real, that'd be crazy, but. Yeah, it's, it's just tough. tough. With IP autographs. You just can't buy no, no, certified stuff. No, I completely. I mean, I don't know if you know it better than I know it, Jay. 
Is this real or fake? We'll ask our comment section so we can help you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take a look. Yeah, unfortunately, sets like 87 I'm, tops, they sell for I'm like say 20 no. bucks, 30 bucks. That's the best advice I got, okay? Okay. What was your name? Nathan. 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 Rob, pleasure. Thank you so much, Nathan. Good luck to you. Nice to meet you. Thank you yep. so much, guys. All right, you take it easy now. So I started collecting in 2009, and someone would come in with a box like that, and the owners were really mean to the people. Right. I noticed that you want to edu you, you no. want to educate people and help them along the way, but right. some owners get freak out and they're like, "No, this is garbage. Don't bring it back." Oh God, no! Again, that's about looking at it from the other side of the counter. Somebody thinks they have something they don't know. What you got to remember is, cards from 1987 are 37 years old, and to a lot of people and most other things, 37 years old is old and maybe the cards are even in nice shape but if you're in the industry you know that there's a lot of them out there we might already have 25,000 cards online you always want to look at it you never want to just dismiss it and go this is junk i don't want it even though i hear people do that all the time i'm always going to come out i'm going to take a look to make sure there isn't a hidden gem the griffey obviously you can't do much with it um i don't know autographs at all in my opinion i didn't think the griffey was real yeah, more than likely not, but I don't know. But you get deals like that, but you never know. It could be something really cool underneath. That's why I kind of took a look down there just to make sure. There was a couple cards from 1960. They were commons, basically fours that are worth two bucks. So wasn't much that we could do with it. We would donate most of it, maybe take it to the VA. You can get a tax write-off. Those guys that might be in the VA were kids when those cards came out and they would get a lot of um, enjoyment out of those cards and you're doing something positive dealers no real professional retailers probably going to put a number on that deal because either they already own it or there's just no demand in their shop and i don't want to send them on a wild goose chase either i'm not going to say there's a store two miles from me or a mile from me take it there when i know they're not going to buy it like this person from monrovia sent them all the way over here thinking that I'm going to want it, they should have probably known ahead of time, this is really low-end stuff. Now I'm sending somebody an hour round trip for them, probably to say the same thing that I did. But maybe you communicated better than they did. I'm, I'm pretty sure I did. Who knows? Boom. For the PC, let's let's hear it. What did you get? Oh, dude. Oh, five finest gold. Just came back from PSA. Wow. And what made Show you... the rest of the PC. Oh yeah, let's see it. You want to show some of your stuff from the PC? Yeah. We always see Rob's PC. Let's see Ryan's PC. I got a new card. I love your PC because I'm a diehard Kings fan. So when I was eight to ten years old, Peja was one of my favorites. So I only collect Peja. It's my favorite card. Star Ruby's rookie. And what made you want to collect Peja? I just watched him as a kid all the time. He's just my guy. If I was playing 2K, I was playing as the Kings. If I was watching basketball, I was just watching Kings games. So. Page was my guy, just a lockdown um, three-point shooter and never missed and just fun to watch. So that was my guy as a kid. Got all the jerseys, got everything. Limited logos. Oh my gosh, look at that patch. Mm -hmm. 0405. Are there a lot of Page collectors? Too many. Oh, there's a lot. Yeah, mostly international. Um, auctions get run up pretty heavy. One of one from 05 Exquisite. Mm -hmm. I think Golden was running a bunch of one-on-ones from this set. I think someone broke up their set, so wow. I was able to get the page, yeah. But I got a lot of cool stuff up here. I got How about that limited logos with the All-Star game? Yeah, All-Star game, all three. That's crazy. I got that at the National. Can you pull that out? Mm-hmm. Got that at the National. So obviously you PC someone. Yeah, I mean, I have. I honestly have just like endless cool page stuff. That's sick. Very low pop. I don't know exactly what the pop is. I think it's like 15 or 20 for yeah. refractor tens, which is very low. I've been talking a lot about, you know, finding PCs. Obviously this, look at this team. That's one of my favorite teams right there. Yeah. What advice do you have for like people that are trying to find like a PC? Like what was going through your mind when you want to collect Peja that you can like remember? Um, that you're like, I'm gonna collect this guy. I think it's just cool to track down like rare items that I'm happy with that I know like I'm never gonna sell it and I get joy from finding these and I get joy from getting a card back from PSA Then I'm like, it's a PC piece. I'm gonna put it on the stand and I'm gonna remember where I bought it. I'm gonna remember when I got it back from PSA. I'm gonna remember who I bought it from. And uh, it's just part of my collection now. Sometimes people drop off stuff for me, which I'm always super happy with. But uh, no, it just makes me happy. And this is your PC as well. Yeah. Okay, why, why him? So I started playing soccer recently. I, I, 
play on the men's league team with a bunch of friends. Never watched soccer up until like a year ago. And a year ago, I'm like, okay, I'm playing soccer. I need a team. And I'm like, dude, this guy's the man. And uh, I started watching Man City games. So Man City fan now. And uh, De Bruyne is the guy. So I'm like, you know That's what? Sick. His stuff is cheap here and there. A couple things. But this is the first big card. That I've, uh, is that out of five? Yeah, it's out of five. I bought it raw and just got that back with with the Peja. So that's cool. Dubrona and Peja. All right, that's I'm the here for that's it. The PC. Now I know this is a new PC. That's it. Vintage 1963 stars. Duke Snyder. Man, look at that Frank Robinson. Beautiful right there. Harmon Killebrew. Another Harmon Killebrew. Duke Snyder. Really trying to learn about vintage this year. If anybody has any tips, let me know. Loot, oh, Willie Stargell, it's beautiful. A little off-centered. It's not bad, that loop rock. Jim Palmer, Monte Irvin, sick. Oh, look at the Phil Rizzuto. Steph Curry patch, auto rookie for 3K. I would trade into that, sick. The Kareem on card. Dude, this Jerry West, 72 top, signing green. Of course, phenomenal. Look at this Mickey Mantle, Steph Curry rookie auto. Jackie Robinson, 56 tops. Ant-Man for 130, it's not bad. PSA 8 though. Shevchenko at, at a 10. Got a little Chamberlain, beautiful card right there. Rose Namajunas. Johnny Bench. Kyle Long, gold auto at a 10. Ezekiel Elliott, gold out of 10 for 30 bucks. Otani versus Trout, it's a classic card. The Ellie Day of the Cruise. J Rod. How we doing? Hey, hey, good. How Busy you day at Burbank Cards? Oh, yeah. What's the move today? What's been moving? What's on schedule? Uh, actually, Stadium Club Hobby. Yeah? Yeah. yeah release day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Release day. He's on the move. Yeah. And this is just some other stuff I picked up. That's a tough card. That is cool. It's a tough grade. Second year Clemente. Ooh, kaboom. Kaboom. To a rookie, great Bob Gibson rookie. That's cool. Oh, Kobe Otto. That's sick. Yeah, this is the stuff that's flowing right now. Yeah, Ryan's been spending a lot of money, which basically is every day that ends in a Y. That child is spending a lot of money. And you're totally cool with it. You trust him. Shit, man. It's like I, I he could spend 24/7. I could care less. Yeah, he's good. Do you remember what the most amount of money you spent at Burbank Cards is in one day? Me. In general, um, about seven hundred and eighty grand. Seven hundred and eighty grand. Yeah, on was, cardboard. Yeah, it was the Hawaii deal back in uh, two thousand eight. Tell me about the Hawaii deal. I've never even heard this. Yeah, it's uh, the biggest collection probably in the history of the industry. The most complete, the widest. Um, this was back. I took three forty-foot storage containers to bring it back. Uh, it was in Hawaii. Everything from credentials to tobacco. Today, I don't even know what it would be worth, but uh, Gaudi sets, Bowman basketball sets, 86 87 Fleer sets, just everything you can imagine rubies, all that stuff. And um, yeah, it costs 30 grand just to get it back. That's how much stuff we're talking about. And how did you come up on the deal? Where did this This guy on? was my best customer, and he'd come in four or five times a year. Spend twenty, thirty thousand in the store. Loved our store because of how organized it was. He was building sets of everything, and uh, when he passed away, he passed away two days before my mother, which was an awful Damn. week to say the least. But I went out to his service. Was the only card person there. Spoke to the family, and they're like, "We have seven storage containers and half the house is cards. Can you please come out and let us know what you have?" and uh, Went out there and took a look at it. Five days of just going through cards and came up with a number just for them to know kind of what it's worth. And they asked if we'd pay it. And we ended up paying it. And uh, just tremendous. I just wish we still had it today. Um, but we were getting three times book back then. And people were bitching. People were moaning. And I'm like, no one else has it. And what was everybody mad about? Because we were expensive with the cards. But nobody else had the cards. It was, um, this was back in like 2008, 2009. So this is post-recession. This was right 
when we bought the cards, I was in Hawaii, I was in their pool, and it was that Monday where the market went to hell, and I'm sitting there going, I cannot believe how much I'm spending on sports cards right now, because the market had just bottomed. Thank God we moved into that warehouse, otherwise it wouldn't have all fit anywhere, I wouldn't even know where to put it. Um, and thankfully we just moved in there and we were able to squeeze it in there because um, we hadn't shelved out the back bay of the warehouse yet because mm. we had just moved in there in 2007 so but yeah ryan legitimately spends six figures in this place on a pretty regular basis between him jordan and ray and during 2002 2008 2009 780,000 was considered i mean nowadays that'd probably be like what a couple million in this hobby probably four million um you know it was unheard of back then at the time my previous record was like 110,000 on a deal you weren't worried with the recession and you said the market bottom and you spent seven hundred eighty thousand dollars i mean i gotta ask well we quoted it before it all happened and then when we ended up buying it at that number that's when the market started crashing but we still stuck to the number because we thought it was that good yeah i'd never seen anything like it before or since and uh, he was a one-man economy sold his bank his family bank to b of a wow. and uh wasn't afraid to spend money he had a want list he used to walk around with like a telephone book of lists at the shows and then finally he digitized it and got it onto a laptop but he was old school wow. and he loved our shop because we were so organized he could go through all of our things and pull out 800 count boxes and spend 15, 20, 25 grand, which we would go and reinvest in the types of stuff that he was looking for. And that's a big part of how we built our business. Why weren't you scared to spend that kind of money after such a damaging time in the economy though? Because you gotta, you gotta ask the question, that could happen again, right? No, we, it's, we spend money. You saw the Otanis, I mean. Yeah. We are all in. We feel confident in our abilities and we don't let external noise affect how we do business. And I think that that's critical is that you have confidence in your abilities and that um, you Amazon proof your business, you fanatics proof your business, and you try to uh, economically, you know, safeguard your business with, with the effort that you put forth. So these cards will be available tomorrow and then they'll be online ASAP. So there's no downtime with any of these things. So we're selling in real time in the real market constantly. Freshly priced, we'll let people know we have it and then people descend on the shop knowing that, oh my God, I wasn't gonna go to Burbank today because I was just there three days ago, but look what he put in the showcase today. Cool. I don't think anybody else does it quite like that. Last question, 780,000. Do you know what you turned it into? I really don't know. Um, it was a couple million though. It was at least $2 million. Um, wow. Yeah, but it was a lot of work. Um, the stuff didn't sell itself, didn't scan itself, didn't database itself, didn't intersort itself. Not everything sells, but, um, but we do that every day. We try to turn quarters into dollars, dollars into $3, and just that's what leveled up our business over decades is not being afraid to deal with dollar cards because dollar cards, when you keep going like this with them, most importantly, we're getting new customers because every single card you put on eBay is a new tentacle out there to gain a customer. So when you're putting that wide of a variety onto eBay, you're gaining a lot of customers that you would never get yourself. So we bought the deal about 16 years ago and George, who's been with me since he was 15 years old, he's 34 now, I brought him with me. Um, Two reasons, A, to keep an eye on all the movers, and B, since all this crazy stuff was going on to a cargo container on a ship, we wanted to make sure the really crazy stuff was coming back with us on duffel bags that we could take on the plane. I mean, 57 baseball sets weren't good enough to come back with us. I mean, it was crazy, gouty set kind of stuff. So really, he was with me so I could make sure that A, I get the best stuff back quickly because container ships take a while. And um, B, we had like eight um, large human beings that were responsible for putting everything into the storage containers. I needed an extra set of eyes as well. Until you've been involved in a deal like that, it's hard to really fathom how are you gonna get all these cards back from the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So it was a challenge on every level. 
Um, never had to deal with anything like that since, but I know there's got to be something out there like it. So that's why we do what we do every day. Boom. So these are all priced. This is a short print out of 52 Bowman Large. They give me this stuff. They put post-it notes on it. I'm the one that gets it in the bag. Gets it freshly priced. Got to make sure that everything looks tight, looks straight every single time. So, yeah, this is what happens back here. I love it. I love it. I've never been burnt out. One tray for the world. Ooh, that one's kind of sweet. Wow, Derek Henry Cool. That yeah. Jude Bellingham's really nice. All day I'm doing this. So on that, you're not gonna. That's you're not gonna put that on the showcase because you're gonna grade it. It's gonna go grading. Wow. Good eye. I do have a good eye. How about that one? I don't know. Let's take a look at it. He played really well. Mm, I'm not quite crazy on the centering. I think we'll keep that one raw. There you go. Ooh, this is sweet. Let's see ya. Wow. This is just what he does all day long. Stare it down. Thick cards are tough to grade. Yeah. So I just put the stuff to the side. Some of it's stuff that's going to be 50 bucks. We just need stuff at every price point. So. This is just some random stuff. A lot of the stuff's not expensive. We just need affordable graded cards. Oh yeah, this Otani I think I'm writing there. Holy yeah. smokes. Remember how expensive that was? John Morant, I know. Just all kinds of things. Yeah, so I just dump them in here. Every day or two we, we submit and send them off. I'm addicted to cards. I think that I might be the biggest card dork in the industry. I think more cards have passed through my hands than um, anyone else in the history of the industry. Want to see something cool? Whoa, is that you? That's how much feedback we get a month. Is We're, that is that to everybody on eBay? That is everyone on eBay, every category global. We're number 13 in the amount of volume that we ship out. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to get to the top 10. And I think we can do it. Um, we've gone to a free shipping model on eBay where every single card on the Burbank site, all 2.6 million different ones, are free shipping. Never been done before. And uh, we keep hiring bodies to throw at it. We've never sold cards like we're selling them. We're taking the friction out of buying cards, just making it simple, put 10 cards, 12 cards, two cards in the shopping cart. The price you see is the price you pay landed. Big decision to make, but we're hammering the site with 2023. What's crazy is, and I keep track of a lot of things here. Like, let's just go to our Beckett Marketplace site. Want to see something crazy, Jay? So let's just type in 2023. We're going to come up with almost 30,000 different cards from 2023. Yeah. But the cool thing is, let's roll down here. Over 5,000 of them are serial numbered. 5,000 different serial numbered cards from 2023. We've hired more people, we're spending more money, we're processing faster, and it's absolutely crazy. Um, if you go to our homepage real quick, if you wanna see something really nutty, I keep a track of a lot of this stuff. We have over 500,000 different serial numbered cards. Wow. which is absolutely crazy. So this site is basically the same site as our eBay store. We actually, for jerseys and autos, we have 76,000 different autographs Jeez. on our site that start at... There's like a 70 cent card on there. Yeah, um, I don't know why that comes up as auto, yeah. So we have autographs that start at 80 cents wow. on our website. And there's free shipping? Um, on the Beckett site, it is, I believe, 30 bucks. But if you go to our eBay store, every single card on our eBay store now, and we've sold 6.4 million Jeez. different cards on eBay, but everything you see is free shipping. Buy five, get one free. That's Buy cool. five, get one free. You'll see free shipping. Marvin Harrison, rookie, a buck 75. But yeah. Everything's free shipping, starts at a buck 49. No one in sports cards has sold that many cards. Wow. We're, we're the only ones over 6 million different cards Jeez. sold. I believe 
it's better to I personally don't want to open a card shop you've been very successful because you've been doing it for so long yeah people will get very into this let me open a shop sure. let me open a shop uh -huh. but wouldn't you wouldn't you give people advice to start an online business over a real card shop all of these new pandemic shops let's just call them pandemic shops for now shops that have opened the last three four years how many of them have websites where they have singles for sale so I don't believe that online is whatnot, anything like that. I feel online's an actual website. I mean, you wanna ask about online, we have over 20,000 different 49ers cards. So that's an online business. It's not, it's not IG, it's not TikTok, that's an actual website, which I don't see from hardly anybody. Do you think this, is, this would be successful for people to use website instead of like building through like, couldn't they use social media too and all this? How do you use social media to have 5,000 different cards from 2023. Hmm. How does that even work? Yeah, I have no idea. Look at your business from the customer's point of view. That's number one. Make sure that no external forces can hurt you. If Fanatics cuts off your allocation, you can still survive. Um, if Amazon tries to replicate what you're doing, you can still survive. So um, that's the top two. And you have to have a web presence. You need to be 24 seven to um, to customers outside of your 30 to 40 mile range. I think those are the three things, especially looking at your business from the customer's point of view. You want to eliminate friction, um, you want to be organized, and you want to make sure that you provide liquidity. Because if you don't buy cards back, if your inventory isn't fresh, why do people come to your store? Mm. It makes no sense. If you don't have fresh inventory that's organized, I wouldn't waste my time going to a shop. And if all you have is unopened product, then you got the same thing as everybody else. They all have that unopened product. If you only break, you're competing against everybody else that breaks. So you need to be able to differentiate yourself from everyone else and embrace the grind. If you can embrace the grind, have a passion for it, it's gonna show. It's gonna show your customers that you care about them, that you're willing to do the work so that they have an A plus experience and it, the money will come. Don't get in it just for the money get in it because of the passion if you enjoy it if you do it right the money will come jordan he's my best buyer jordan how does that feel rob just told you you're the best buyer he is the best buyer feels good yeah. and, and what are we on right now we're on card ladder yeah. wow. look at that beauty diamond anniversary of what's your favorite part about working at burbank cards working for me working for me besides working for the card father besides working for the god the card, the card father. father oh it's something different every day you never know what's gonna walk through the door is there anything that ever walked through the door where you just like your jaw dropped and it hit for you? Some dude showed us a, a Wilt rookie that was signed. That was a huge card. Oh. Yeah. Well, we just bought a Wilt 6970 signed. But that just came back authentic from PSA. Huge. Um, Ryan just showed it to me actually. I'm not sure where it is, but it's a authentic Wilt Chamberlain auto on a 6970 Tops card, wow. his second card. So, little messy blue chrome. So, you see it up on card ladder. You're obviously going through to find it. Maybe type in what year is it? I think it's 2019. Okay. And then you're after you buy it, you're going to process it and price it. Yep. And then does it go to Rob or where does it go? He'll put a, he'll put a post it note on it, what he paid for it. And then it all goes to my office and I give him all the premium stuff to price. He'll know what he already paid for it. So it's easier for him to price it. Plus it's still fresh in his mind because he might've bought it an hour, hour and a half ago. So he knows what to put the number on. I'll make sure it's clean, whether it's in a nice clean top load, magnet, freshly bag all the graded stuff. So it's not crappy bags. Um, and I'll get a price gun and I'll get the stuff priced at what they want to price it. And stuff will go out usually the next day at wow. the latest. Wow. So it'll go from him buying it there to probably being on an IG Live as early as tomorrow night. Processing cards quick, man. Yeah. Love, to see it. love the fishbowl. Absolutely love this place. This is the best card shop. I the content, just everything, the people, the the sales, the knowledge, the experience. Look at all the wax they have. They have Pokemon. They have freaking Marvel Studios. Look at all this stuff. They have UFC. Top Scrum Sapphire, they got F1, tons of soccer. Ten dollars for a PSA 10, not a good, not a great player, but still pretty cool. That's watching your videos. Let's go, you're in it now, let's go. Dude, I like that shirt, bro. Appreciate it, it, man. Look at that, it's fire. What'd you pick up? Uh, I didn't pick up anything. I'm just coming here to like... Try to sell? Try to sell. Let's see it. Ooh, Warren Moon, that's a sick card. Who's a beast, Houston Oilers? Who do you, who do you guys collect? 
Uh, I just started collecting, to be honest. Okay. Uh, I just got into the hobby, got got bored, so I was looking to pick up something new. Okay. Um, we've been keeping up with NFL and NBA lately, and I found that you know getting into cards actually increased my uh, my love for like watching sports because it's really interesting to collect cards, knowing that despite uh, picking up a rare car like you could for a character it could go up in price so like it keeps you interested because you're like hmm if this uh player does good then his car is gonna go up in price and you can make money off it i'm more into it for like the the hobby i think i feel like um trying to collect it like a box like trying to get a car that you want to you know get and sell doesn't really like bring you happiness like it actually i feel like it brings you more like like emotions and getting you know frustrated about something you're not gonna get if you're a laker fan like you'll always appreciate kobe yeah. and uh, now lebron like i yeah. like the kings so obviously yeah. demarcus cousins De'Aaron fox yeah, exactly. but with those guys i can buy them and not feel any like oh they had a bad game you know so it helps me so man michael porter i remember he was crushing it nikhil alexander walker keldon Autograph, look at that Tony Brown. Execute first edition, that's a cool one. UFC, Valentina Shevchenko, out of 1232, that's a cool one. Look at that Lugia first edition, PSA, card's insane. My favorite, Blastoise. Shining Charizard. Tobacco cards, 80 bucks, it's crazy. Now we're at the opposite spectrum. You were just talking about a Chamberlain? Holy! Oh, it's got his auto. <laughs> it's got the PSA DNA. That's his second card. And it comes with the uh, cert on the back as well. So did he sign it upside down? Yeah. Um, I think it's, yeah, he probably did. Yeah. Wow, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Speaking of vintage basketball, here's one you don't see every day. See that's Bob Cousy's first card. Ted Williams. Well, that's not. But, uh, yeah, we got Last Jackie. All-time great. Well, this stuff's what I'm working on right now. That's the fun stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, second year Aaron. You see? That one's a four. This one, I just got to price it. That one's a six. That's nice. So. How often do you get mantles in here? Not often enough, but uh, they do flow through here. They do flow through. They're not rare, the stuff from the 60s, so it does come through. It's nice having fours, fives, sixes in here. Everything rolls through here at some point, so you just got to be here, got to take the time. Vintage is hard. I mean, it's hard doing the deals, really staring the cards down, and PSA has been grading things probably a grade too low across the board with everything we got coming in here, where I'm just like, I'm looking at cards where I'm like, there was a certain card here. Me and Rick were staring at it going, you've got to be kidding me. It was this one right here where it's like, the thing is like perfect. It's like, how is that a six? They've been really tough on vintage of late. Do you think they just have a higher standard for nines and tens? Cause they, they catch a good price, right? Yeah, but they just need to be more consistent. You know, you go online, you look at sixes, you're like, that looks like that looks like garbage and i'm like it's just like i don't even know i just don't even know sometimes but it is the game we play the game and uh, like there's another stack of stuff still has to be bagged and priced you know jim, jim brown. brown yeah sunny jorgensen rookie yeah, those are my kind of subs just neat stuff second year this football is so sick. Yeah, so oh. that's stuff that Ryan just tags it. I make sure it gets freshly bagged, priced exactly where it goes. Then it goes into all our systems, our IG lives, all those things. So. Cool. Wemby stuff is fire right now. Yeah. Man, he's probably going to win Rookie of the Year this year. You think so? It's going to go crazy. Who knew he was killing it is Chet and exactly. uh, Shea Gilders Alexander. <sighs> Man. And then, dude, Embiid had set a 70 piece. That's <laughs> crazy. That's fire though, man. Yeah, first pack, it was a discount pack too, only $6. First pack, I ripped it, got this guy right here. I was supposed to do a live sale at 5 o'clock today on Whatnot, and now I talked to Rob and Ryan, and they've given me permission to run the live sale from Burbank because if I try to go home right now, it's not going to happen because traffic. So I'm running a live sale 
from our whatnot, which you guys got to tap in below. Just picked up all this inventory. We're gonna be live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Click that link down below, get your first $10 spend on me, and make sure you bookmark those streams. But basically, <laughs> I'm stuck. And I'm gonna run a little live stream from the fishbowl. I'm gonna go over there. Rob's giving me some team bags. I got some sticky notes. I got my smartphone and I got inventory. So that's just the way it works. Got everybody here. Here's some of our singles we're gonna run. We got a whole stack. We're live on uh, whatnot right now. One, we haven't even run a single auction yet, but they've been very patient. They're gonna get some giveaways tonight. We're gonna have some good vibes. I am live in the fishbowl selling cards. Hey, what's up? What, tell them what you're here for. I'm here for my stand so I could do my IG live and drink Coors Light. <laughs> he's got me. I got a good gig, man. He, I got a good gig. He's leaving. He's, he needs a stand, guys. He's making me leave. Yeah. IG live, 6 o'clock, Burbank stream, man. Come check me out. Get back to work. Coors Light out. All right, you guys. That is a day at Burbank. We're here every week with this crazy guy. Card father here. <laughs> Let's go. And don't forget about the Burbank Card Show. Can't wait to see you guys there February 15th through the 18th. You guys got to make it. And if you can't, tune into our channel. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit up the Kids Trade Day. I put the tickets down below. All kids can come for free. We're partnered up with Burbank Card Show, PSA, Ultra Pro. We're going to be doing a ton of giveaways and educate the hobby. So I can't wait to see you guys on that Saturday at Burbank Card Show. Look at this. Time After to hours. shut this mother down. Long day. Long day, dude. 11 hours, man. 11. He did 11 hours. I was here for a couple, but... Actually, more than 11. I was here at 7.45, so yeah, getting closer to 12 hours. Look at this. You never see this place as empty and dark as this, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like, leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you at Burbank Card Show February 15th through the 18th. Come hang out at the Kids Trade Day. Got the link down below. Just another day in Burbank Sports Cards with the goat. The goat. <laughs> That's you. We're out.